And hello, Matthew, can you hear me? Hi, Abe. Yes, I can hear you. So for this video, we're covering two uh, stocks. One is Chipotle. Everybody knows Chipotle, good food. And the other one is Dine Brands, which owns a bunch of uh, restaurants, um, yeah. which Matthew's going to cover on a qualitative level. And then I'm going to do the financials and explain what's going on. Yep. So uh, I'll share my screen with you guys first with Chipotle, and then I'll cover the... Uh the report with Argus for uh, Dine Brands. And Dine Brands covers uh, Applebee's and IHOP. Those are the two uh, mm -hmm. companies for that. So first Chipotle. All right. Abe, do you see the report? Yes, just give me a one Perfect. sec. Okay, now I can see it well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good. Enlarge it or you're good? It's good. It's good. All right, perfect. So, all right, so Chipotle. We all know Chipotle. It has uh, currently 3,400 restaurants uh, as of March 15, 2024. Uh, they're planning on going uh, to the year end. Uh, I think 300 restaurants, about three to 400 restaurants. That's what they're they they want to expand to. Uh, market cap of 75 billion. Uh, we all know it. Uh, Tex-Mex Grill, uh, great food. Uh, everything's great there. So, uh, more in the financials. Really, uh, when, when it comes to Chipotle, we're looking at uh, their revenue increasing, their cash flow increasing, and how many stores they're going to keep opening and expanding to. I believe that they want to do more of a global expansion. I believe they're already starting to uh, have a foothold in the UK, and then overall they're going to start going into Europe. Uh, I don't know if they're going to uh, go into China at all yet, uh, or if they have any stores. Uh, doesn't mention it here in the analyst report. So I would imagine they're first going to uh, open as many stores as possible, more in the U.S., and then they're going to start their global expansion first in Europe and then after to maybe South America and then to China. Uh, so right now, as of March 15th, according to this report, we had a, a P.E. ratio of 50 uh, price to earnings. Uh, so it's pretty high relative to its competitors. Uh, you're paying quite a premium if you're very interested in this company. Uh, I don't see a, a high margin of safety with this, in, in all honesty. Uh, altogether, uh, Chipotle is pretty much using the same strategy as uh, we mentioned in the McDonald's video and the Wendy's video, which is they're uh, digitizing their app and they're opening up drive through uh, drive throughs throughout the country. So it's quicker, faster, more efficient service. So essentially, uh, just to reiterate the points is, you use the Chipotle app, you could get it some points or a discount, reward points or a discount within the app. And then you go to the drive through you pick it up, you're done, that's it. Su su super simple process, pretty much what McDonald's is doing. They're uh, more or less using the same strategy as uh, both McDonald's and Wendy's. I think most fast food uh, is pretty much copying that strategy altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, this report, uh, by the way, guys, it's super bullish, uh, just to let you know. So they're going to paint a very rosy picture about it. Uh, not saying that it's not justified because it is growing still pre pretty well. Uh, so the revenue from 2019 to 2023 has been growing pretty nice and steady. And I, I won't cover too much because Abe will go through the historical growth parts of of the quant stuff mm. but just so i'm going to highlight the revenue just so everyone could see from 2019 to 2023 that was 5.5 5 billion and then 2023 it's 9.8 billion revenue so that's good to see of course uh the cash in millions this is a little bit different uh because in, you could see that they're quote unquote losing money uh in free cash flow but that's not true because uh they're, they have a lot of share buyback programs so keep in mind obviously when they buy back their shares, their cash uh, that they have on balance goes down. So I wouldn't be too concerned with that. Uh, overall though, it's still you know a relatively good company, low debt, manageable debt, nothing too crazy. And of course, the C uh, Brian Nickel, who, was a C who became the CEO in 2018, he really did a huge turnaround for uh, Chipotle. Uh, other than that, Abe, I don't know if you have anything else to add, if I missed anything or no, uh, uh, can we see the Dime Brands? Do you have one? Or nothing? Oh, uh, do you want me to compare the industries or should I yeah. cover Dime Brands first and then we could? Because I could do either or. Um, by compare the industries, what do you mean? Because they have, uh, if you look on my screen, they have peer industry analysis. So they'll compare yeah. it with like the PE with Starbucks. All right, so I'll just cover that and then Dime Brands. So uh, Wendy's we covered, uh, their PE is low. 
uh, probably undervalued stock. Domino's uh, a little bit higher. And then Chipotle is the highest out of the whole group, which is right here on the 50.7 uh, price to earnings. It's the highest in uh, their competitors, which uh, it's hard to justify that kind of value, in my opinion. But they are a fast grower, too. So, all right. So I'll, I'll head on over. I'll switch my screen now to uh, the Argus report for Dine Brands, which is IHOP and Applebee's. And everyone knows IHOP. Everyone knows Applebee's. Uh, so let me pull that out right now. Yeah, so IHOP, great pancake place. Love it. Great. Yeah, better than Denny's, in my opinion. But Denny's is also good. I won't mm -hmm. uh, knock on Denny's. Uh, all right, so Argus, as you could see, three pages, pretty concise. Doesn't really have any of the qualitative stuff. Just kind of goes through numbers. Uh, more or less, uh, keep in mind, it does pay you a high dividend. It's not a big grower. We do think these shares are undervalued. 4.4% uh, dividend yield. Yeah, 4.4% dividend yield, uh, annualized dividend yield. Mm -hmm. So these, uh, we, we do think the shares are undervalued uh, by quite a premium. Again, Abe will go through that quant stuff to kind of go through the historical growth and all that. But uh, the long-term debt has been pretty relatively stable. The revenue has been pretty much the same. It's been wishy-washy. Uh, so because if you look at 2019, it was 910 million. And then 2023, it's 831 million. So slight downturn, but you know it's had some down years and up years for that. So it's been swinging here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, pretty stable company, decent dividend. And, uh, and then here are the uh, peers in the group. Uh, they don't put Chipotle in the group. I'm guessing it's because it's a little bit different uh, from Chipotle, and the reason is uh, Chipotle is maybe considered more of a fast grower, while Applebee's and IHOP are more, uh, they're older on the scene than Chipotle. So BJ's. they're with Cracker, yeah, they're with yeah. Cracker Barrel and BJ's restaurants, and I've never heard of Chewy's Holdings, honestly. Jack in the Box. And Jack in the Box, we, we, we know. So here are the PEs for that. Uh, Cracker Barrel's 13, Jack in the Box 13. BJ's restaurants 31. So, so industry and, uh, average is around 15. So this is very cheap, actually. It's 70 yes. ratio. So, yep. Uh, so I'll plus pass good it over. dividend, plus very cheap. Yeah. So I'll pass it over to Abe now, and he'll explain the quant stuff for Chipotle yeah. and then uh, Dine Brands. All right. So um, I want to start with. Can you see this? Can you see? Uh, hold on. Let me give me a sec. Yep. All right, so I'm going to start with Chipotle. So this is just base case, 9% um, discount rate, 3% terminal growth, historical growth, free cash flow to equity, five years, and overvalued by 41%. So yep. um, expensive. Can you, show the, uh, can you go, go to the table mode, Abe, just to show people what's the historical revenue growth, just for people to know? Yeah, 14 15%. Yeah, 15%. Yep. And margins are okay. around 13 to 15 Makes sense. Yeah. And um, yeah. so, I mean, even though the company will do well, 50, 50 or 60 P ratio currently is way too much. So I'm going yeah, to, yeah, hopefully. Not yeah, justified. Yeah, not justified at all. Uh, I'm going to try to log into my account and then here, um, Chipotle. Let's see the P ratio right now. All right, financials. Yeah, oh, wow, it's 63. It's even 63, higher than what yeah. I was trading 12 months, 63, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's even higher. Definitely not something. What's the free cash flow? Make sure that's updated, Abe. Can you just go to the free cash flow for people? All right, let's go to cash flow. Make sure that, that the Argus numbers are right. All right, last few years, 290, 839, 844. 1.2. So it's actually improving every year. The problem is right. the P ratio. 63 is just, it's yeah, not, it's like ridiculous. semiconductor level. And what's the traditional for restaurant, for, uh, like 15, restaurant industry? 15. 15. Yeah. Oh, very high. Very high. Very, very multiple. high. So it's actually going to do very well. That's the only reason why this is not 80% overvalued because it's going to do very well. Um, yeah. Some people <laughs> may think it'll grow into its valuation also. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> if it becomes a <laughs> semiconductor company, I can see that happening. <laughs> All or right. if it has like, if, or or 
I guess you could say the Super Bowl case would be yeah, like that five years that it ex- beats everything five years can say. Yeah, and they start expanding rapidly in China, you know, yeah, or something yeah. like that. They're yeah, opening yeah. like a hundred, five hundred stores a, a year. Or something I can in China. see that. Yes. Yeah. Something like, Super Bowl. If they yeah, but it just has to be like beats like top line, bottom line, beat, 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 beat every year, every yeah. quarter. Yeah. <laughs> has to be like perfect performance. <laughs> All right. Um, so overvalued at forty one percent base case, and then here we're gonna do Dyn Brands, and this is very interesting because we were talking about the dividend yield, right? And mm-hmm. I'll show you the DCF, and it's actually quite upsetting from a corporate perspective. So from a corporate standpoint, his, I used historicals; they're losing revenue. Look at the last, look at the terminal revenue being uh, seven thirty six. Hold on, I'm gonna have to do that again. Oh geez, I'm sorry. It's okay. Five, nine. Well, this is actually even better. It shows you that we can get the same result. Okay. So table mode, look at the last revenue, terminal revenue, 736, and it's losing 2% revenue every year, year yeah. for five years consecutive. And the margins are not improving. They're like 11 to 13. So basically, it's almost the same. And even then, it's undervalued. But guess why? It's a 7 P ratio. Dividend yield is 4.4%. So it's like saying you're buying this half off, right? Market average. And you're getting 4.4%. If you just reinvest the dividend the next five years, you have at least, you know, 12 to 20% there. Plus, right. this, plus this undervaluation. Um, right. So in, in the very worst case scenario that it does what it did last five years, which is trade up and down because it has zero growth, at least the, if you reinvest the dividend, you know for sure um, at these extremely low values, you'll make something, right? Right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, just be careful. Mm-hmm. Just be careful, guys, because the restaurant industry is very competitive. McDonald's does sell, you know, for in terms of breakfast, McDonald's does sell breakfast. So that competes with IHOP. So does Wendy's. They sell breakfast. So just keep in mind, Applebee's is like burger, salad, stuff like that. McDonald's sells that. Wendy's sells that. So just keep in mind the competitiveness of the nature of the of dine brands as well so competitive but much cheaper than chipotle and yes. i think we made mcdonald's the other day much cheaper yeah than and it was McDonald's. cheaper much cheaper than mcdonald's yeah um good dividend and like and look at this this is the sensitivity analysis it's actually the first time this has ever happened to me <laughs> which means that even if they're losing revenue he look revenue growth minus 20 percent it's still undervalued like normally this thing is like red here and then green here you know red at the start and so if it starts really getting into the numbers it starts making money but this thing is green all around so it's just very cheap right now right yep um but yeah it could be a value trap because the market even though something is cheap this is very interesting the free market will pay whatever people believe it is worth. So sometimes it doesn't grow into the valuation, even though it should be trading higher. Because um, right. pe- people just want uh, high growth. A lot, yeah, it, Buffett's, right. Buffett's era and our era is completely different. Um, uh, Buffett's era, people preferred low risk and they would buy these value companies and eventually the value would keep going up to, to right. fair value. But there's the risk that this is just a value trap. But I, I, I mean, at least, at least, if you reinvest the uh, dividend, you're, you're, you're fine in that way. But uh, there's that risk, the value and, trap risk. And to add on to Abe, in, in Buffett's era, that was uh, called cigar butt investing. Just so people are aware. Right. So, so thank, thank you very much for this video, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.